All right, Kitty just decided to join me, so he may be quite vocal for a while if I have something. This is what I want to... I have several things that I want to talk about today or in this particular video. Uh, behind One of them is behind me is a commission I've been working on. And as we know, I moved the finishing stage, the paintings that are in the finishing stages from the garage out to my sunroom so I can see them more clearly. I'm seeing them at new angles, in new light. This is one. I've finished the nine paintings for a product development project I've been working on for a company, all done sitting in an air control or a temperature controlled room. They're drying, we're good as gold. So now I get to go back to the two commissions that I was working on. One of them, I just have to do the aerosol edging on it. The paint, the paint has been really difficult for me to find, not only in town, but online. And when I, ha I ended up having to purchase uh, three different types of paint online and they were all back ordered. They just uh, came in. <clears throat> so I'm headed out to finish that one up. But this particular one, excuse me for a sec, <coughs> my allergies are bad. This particular one, I pulled it out the other day and pulled out the reference material. And in this light, in the height of the, the, uh, the ceiling, which is a little bit higher than the garage, I was able to see, I really screwed them both up. Uh, her head was all over the place. Her veil was out here. I pulled it in a good two, three inches. Um, I've restructured him. He had a gigantic bobblehead, a bobblehead that I couldn't see in my dark little cave of a garage. So now I've been restructuring them so they fall into the rhythm um, that they were that they're in in the reference material, and they're not off. They were terribly, terribly off. So we took Mr. Bobblehead and shrunk him down, and now he's more in line with his body. And unfortunately, I fixated on the hand for for a couple of days, but now that I've got his head, I can recalibrate his hand, and so structurally, they're going to work together much better. I needed to build a good solid foundation, thought I had it in the garage, didn't. I think I'm getting there now. So, boo-doo, ba do I'll be doing a live uh, painting video where I'm just working on these guys. Sorry, you can hear kids screaming in the background. I'm right in back of an elementary school and they've been having recess for hours. So they're all excited to be outside and they're screaming and yelling and I can't blame them. If I could run like that, I'd be screaming and yelling too. Anyway, the other thing I want to move on to, the other thing I really wanted to discuss is I'm not a big Doctor Who fan, but there's a Doctor Who, sorry, but there's a Doctor Who um, episode where he goes back in time and, you know, they come in contact with Vincent Van Gogh and there's this whole relationship thing that's struck up and blah, blah, blah. End of, end of the show, they bring him back to, um, they, they, they're in current time. Uh, they're in the, I think, it, yeah, they're in the 21st century, I believe. I don't know Doctor Who. Anyway, they're now-ish. And they take Vincent Van Gogh to a museum where he is on display. And uh, they bump into the curator of the show, and he's a famous actor, can't remember his name. He's in everything English, and we all love him. Anyway, he, he was in love actually, but he's the curator of the show or the museum director or something or other, but he has, Doctor Who and Vincent Van Gogh are standing and Vincent's back is to the curator. And Doctor Who goes to the curator or the museum director and asks him to talk about Vincent. And as we know, I'm obsessed with Vincent uh, and his life, his life's issues and how he was driven. But Doctor Who and the museum director, whatever he is, um, are talking about Vincent Van Gogh. And this gentleman is talking about the ways Vincent affected the world, has affected the world. How he is the single most popular painter in the world. Um, just all the magnificence he spread across his world. The, the art, not only the art world, but just the human race and culture in general. Um, anywho, I'm going to read the quote. 
because he addresses a really big pet peeve of mine. I'm gonna read you the quote first. Pain, pain is easy to portray, but to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy and joy and magnificence of our world. And he never really finishes the sentence. But what he was saying, what he was saying to Doctor Who, and then of course Van Gogh, who was behind him, was that Van Gogh was the first one to take his own personal pain and, oh, cat's gonna meow in a sec, uh, take his own personal pain and express it to us in his paintings, but not in an obvious way. And that is my pet peeve, that's one of mine. When people express pain through death and skulls and black and tears running down women's faces, and I, I cannot, cannot, cannot stand the obvious. I think it's lazy, pardon me, but I think it's really lazy. With any emotion, what I try to tell people over and over again is you take that emotion, that intent that you have for your work and you apply it, but in another way, in layers, in the slightest expression, the slightest movement of a hand or placement of a hand. Here we have two people on their wedding day and I could express joy, but there's also, oops, a deep sadness a deep sadness. They had a very happy marriage from what I understand, but they're gone now. And the woman that's, or the people that have commissioned me to do this portrait are deeply heartbroken. So I have to take their heartbreak, their sadness, their pain, and apply it to the canvas so they feel that this is an expression of their own love and loss. So I'm gonna read that quote one more time and without putting in skulls and darkness and you know lightning bolts and flames and the devil and, and skeletons. I think that's ridiculous. And oh, it's overdone and it's silly. It's great for tattoos, but please. So I'm trying to find that other depth in this painting. And sometimes it's through meditation, as I talked about before, meditation and staying in that thought while I'm uh, putting on, applying brush strokes. Let's read this one more time. If you have a chance, go see this clip on YouTube. Just put in Dr. Who Van Gogh and it'll pop up. Ready? This is my pet peeve. That's why we're covering it, because I want to help you find something deeper, a better way to express yourself. And it doesn't have to be pain, it can be any emotion. But I'm trying to help you, guide you to find a deeper level. All right, ready? One more time. Pain is easy to portray. Pain is easy to portray. But to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy, joy, and magnificence of our world. If you don't quite understand, go look at Van Gogh's work. You can see his sadness, his, his loneliness, his desperation to connect with the world, his desperation to be part of community. But he never was, not in his lifetime. He was rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected and, rejected and humiliated and push to the side. But instead of sitting down and going, skulls and black and fire and blah, blah, he took his pain, he took his experience, and he applied it to the canvas in other ways, in other levels, so you can feel it. You can feel it when you're in the works present, or even when presents you're in the works presence or even just seeing it online which most of us have to do anyway so that's my big to do for the day i'm going to let the kitty out and then i'm going to get to work on both the commissions okay pain is easy to express but let's find another level all right ciao meow 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 cats 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 or the other way around boink